everybody. Welcome in. It is so good to see you. So many familiar faces. And I am very happy to be back with you guys. I've got a fun project for you guys. We're going to be putting together some beautiful flower pendants made out of artistic wire. And <clears throat> these are really kind of cool because you can really kind of adjust to these. You don't have to make a pendant out of them. You can make a smaller version to create earrings. You can create really big versions of these and hang them up as decorations. I'm going to show you some ways that you can kind of alter these as you go along. And you can make them in any color of the rainbow because you can get them get the wire that we're using in a really cool little pack of a variety of colors so I'm going to show that to you we're going to practice our loops this is a pretty easy project so I hope that you guys are ready to get started I'm going to get you turned around we're going to get right into it and this is going to be kind of a um a quick project so please take this time that we're together to ask you know your wire questions if you want to because I think once we get started with this it is going to go by pretty quickly let me show you a couple of little examples here of what it is that we're doing so we are creating <coughs> excuse me we are creating these little wire flowers with a variety of loops. And I say variety, even though I've used the same size uh, mandrel to, cr to create these, you're gonna be able to use any of six different sizes with the tool that we're gonna be using. So you can really kind of change this up and make these uh, any kind of, any size that you wanted to. Your petals could be any size, which is really cool. And again, I mentioned it can be any color that you want as well. We're gonna talk about all of that here in just a second, but I'm using some 20 gauge wire for the project today. And <clears throat> I'm gonna use this kind of peachy, rose gold color you guys know the pantone color of the year is this peach fuzz color and i thought this was pretty close so i'm going to be using a beautiful yellow bead here in the center and then this kind of peachy colored wire but let me show you how i grab my wire from michael's so i've been in these packs these are the by the dozen packs in 20 gauge you can get these in a lot of different gauges and they come in a huge variety of colors now you can see some of mine are gone that's how often i use these i love to have colored wire on hand and 20 gauge is a great gauge for a lot of different uh projects so you can see like i mentioned i've used i've used quite a few of these already i do have some really beautiful colors that are left over including this kind of peachy pink color that we're going to use for our pendant today but I wanted to mention that you can grab these in different gauges. So if 20 gauge is a little bit too strong for you, uh, you can go down a gauge into the 22 gauge if you want to. You may need to work harden just a little bit or kind of squeeze it down with some nylon jaw pliers. Uh, but I think that you could go as low as 22 gauge for today's project. Now, if you're going to do a really small version of this, say you wanted to make earrings out of this instead of a pendant, you could go even smaller in your gauge if you wanted to. And that's the cool thing about these is that you can still get the variety pack just in a lot of different colors. Now I'm using a bead for this in the center. I'm using this yellow crackle bead here. I'm gonna give you the, the millimeter measurement on this one. It was about a 10 millimeter bead. You can change up the size of your bead as well. So depending on how big you want your flower to be, you could pick a smaller bead or a larger bead. Um, so we're gonna go with this like, it's kind of an in-between nine, 10 millimeter size for ours and the 20 gauge wire. You're gonna be using about 30 inches of the 20 gauge wire for this project. Now. I I, I definitely recommend playing around with this first before you commit to a length of wire. So if you can create this project while working directly from the spool, definitely do that because I've done this project numerous times. Sometimes it takes every bit of 30 inches. Sometimes it takes a little bit less. Sometimes it takes a little bit more. It's really kind of it, it's just one of those things that depending on how tight you make your loops and how three-dimensional you want your flower to look, um, a lot of factors can come into play to really change that wire. So 30 inches is a really good starting point. But again, I kind of recommend doing this from the, the spool to start with just so that you can kind of get an idea of how much wire it's going to take you based on, um, you know, what you want your flower to look like. We're doing ours in three sections 
So we're doing three sections of petals here, and this is going to be in herringbone. So if you've ever done a herringbone wire wrapping project before, this is very similar to that in the sense of how we're going to be connecting this to our center wire wraps that we do. Uh, if you've never done herringbone before, that's okay. You don't have to have that. You don't have to have any experience in that. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. All right, the first thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to practice these loops before we even get into the project, right? We're going to practice some loops with some scrap wire here. Using the stepped bell making pliers here, I mentioned these just a little while ago, you've got an opportunity here to uh, create six different sizes of loops, which is nice for any project, whether it is a craft project or a jewelry making project. Um, but for the project that we're doing today, we're going to be using just the small mandrel here. Uh, however, you can change this up. So if you wanted to do your first layer of your loops with the smaller mandrel and then the next layer a little bit bigger, you could step up and then your back layer even bigger. If you wanted to make a huge flower, you could use all six of the mandrel sizes here and create something with a lot of dimension and texture. So keep that in mind as we're going. I'm kind of doing the simplified version of this, but I hope that this will inspire you to try out uh, different versions of this with the tool, with the wire, changing up the sizes of your beads and all of those things, because this can really be a fun project uh, that can you can get a lot of different results out of. Okay, so the main part of this, of course, is the loops that we're going to be creating. And I'm going to show you guys using the stepped bell making pliers how to uh, create those loops before we get into the actual uh, project. So I've got a piece of the scrapped wire here. Wanda says graduated loops would be so pretty. I agree. I, mean, I, I really want to try that, actually. Um, I've talked about it a lot, but I've not actually done it myself. And I really kind of want to play around with it to see what happens. But we're going to start with loops. We're going to start with our smallest mandrel here. And the loops are going to be created regardless of which size of the mandrel you decide. Uh, they're going to You're going to do your loops exactly the same way. So again, just some practice here. We're going to take the end of the wire. We're grabbing the wire right between the two mandrels here I've got the mandrel that I want to use on the top and I'm grabbing right at the end of the wire and I'm just going to turn a loop now this is one of those things where you can either turn the wire or you can turn the tool it's whatever is the most comfortable for you I turn the tool but you do you do what's more comfortable all right I'm going to take this off and you can see I've created a little loop here now for the next loop I'm going to raise you up just a little bit so I can get the tool completely underneath the camera here all right, for the next loop, I'm going to place the wire into the tool directly next to the loop that I just created. So that basically what I'm saying is the loop that we just created is sitting right next to the tool. There is no daylight in between there. You don't need to space anything out. You're just going to place it right up against the previous loop and you're going to turn another loop. OK, and it might be a little wonky and that's OK. You can just kind of squish it down with your finger, right? The loops do not have to be perfect. We're making flowers, right? Flowers are very organic, obviously. They come from nature. So you can give yourself a break with this. They don't have to be perfect. And not only that, but they're going to kind of cover each other. The only loops that are the most prominent are the ones that are here on this top row. Uh, but even still, they don't have to be perfect. But you're going to make your next loop by just taking it off of the tool and again, placing the wire directly up against the tool to turn the next loop. And I do kind of recommend practicing this a little bit before you get directly into the project, okay? Just to learn how to make a row of the loops. And then once you get to where you're comfortable making your row of loops, you can then turn this into a million different things, right? You can use these to create multi-strand connectors, you can use these for little chandelier components. Like there's a lot of things you can do with some wire and some loops and it's not a difficult technique to learn, uh, but one that you can use in so many different ways, right? So practicing your loops is a great way to start, get comfortable using your wire. And you're gonna notice that as I'm making mine, as I pull the wire out, I'm pulling the wire out straight. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm placing the, the wire into the tool right up against the previous loop, creating that loop, 
And as I turn the tool, I can only turn the tool so far because the mandrel gets in the way. It's right up against my loops. So at this point, it's up to me to continue to bring the wire out in a straight line next to where we previously made a loop, right? Because there's just not quite enough room for that. Right, so going all the way around as much as I can and then straightening the wire out. Right, just make a bunch of those until you feel pretty confident. And you're gonna notice that when you look at it from the side, they're not straight. You can flatten these out with your fingers. You can use nylon jaw pliers to flatten them out. The good news is that, it, is that it's artistic wire, so it's nice and soft. So you can really kind of manipulate this into uh, any kind of any kind of shape that you want. So the, there was a question, can I use something different if I don't have the step to making pliers? You can use um, wooden dowel rods. You can use anything that you've got on hand um, that is going to get you a loop. So the size loop that we're actually ending up making here, just to kind of give you an idea. So if you're looking for something around here, we're making about a three millimeter loop. Um, so I know that that looks a lot smaller. It's a two millimeter mandrel, but it's going to make a three millimeter loop. So anything that's going to be close to that size is going to be just fine for this. So, um, but you definitely can grab the tool over on the Michael's website. If you need to grab one, I use them for everything. So it's definitely a good tool to have on hand. Now you can use your round nose pliers. The problem with using the round nose pliers is that they're tapered. So unless you mark your pliers, right, and put your wire in the exact same spot on the pliers every single time, you may end up with a wide variety of sizes of loops because of that taper from your round nose pliers. But it's not impossible to use those. I say just mark them with a permanent marker so that you get the same size loop every single time. All right, so we're going to get started with the project. Now that we have practiced our loops here, we are going to use a 30 inch piece of that wire and we're going to hope for the best because like I said, sometimes the 30 inches is a little short. Sometimes it's too much. It never, <laughs> it, you really never know until you get right into it. But we are going to start by creating a wrapped loop and we're going to do a wrapped loop that's got about seven wire wraps. So normally when we create a wrapped loop on a piece of wire, we will come down on that wire about an inch and a half, right? <clears throat> inch and a half to two inches. That's going to give us enough to do a loop plus about three inches. For seven wraps, we need to come down a little bit further. You definitely want to make this closer to about two inches um, or, or a little bit more, just depending on your confidence level with your loops. But you're going to come down on that wire, giving yourself enough wire to create at least seven wire wraps, and you're going to give the wire a sharp bend. Okay, then we're going to come in with those stepped bell making pliers, and I'm going to use the smallest mandrel here because I want my loop at the top to kind of blend in with the rest of my petals that we're making. So I want it to be about the same size. So we're going to go up and over. I'm going to rotate take the wire over to the other side, and then we're gonna do our wraps. So we just treat these steps bell making pliers the exact same way you would your round nose pliers. And we're gonna do about seven wraps. So that's gonna give you two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And listen, these wraps don't have to be perfect. You're not going to see these, the wraps at all. They're going to be to the back. So you're, you're not going to see them. So if there are spaces in between them and they're not super tidy, that's okay. Don't worry about it. This is a very forgiving project. So those of you who are new to wire, jump right in with this one. Don't feel like you've got to have a ton of experience because you, you really can hide a lot of the flaws. All right, so I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool, trim off the excess, which, which was just a tiny little amount. All right, so now I'm going to take my bead um, on the other end of this wire and I'm gonna thread that on and I'm gonna bring it right up next to the wire wraps that we just created. Okay, now the next step that we have to do is we have to create this exact little thing here with all these wire wraps on the opposite side of our bead. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can do this the correct way or you can do this the Sarah way. <laughs> uh, the correct way would be to bring in a ruler and 
get really accurate measurements of how how long those wire wraps are. So we're looking at under a quarter of an inch. Okay, I don't do all, I don't do any of that. You can do that if you want to. There's nothing wrong with it. I am just in the the uh, I, I just eyeball it to be completely honest with you. I just eyeball it. So what I'll do is sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. <laughs> it just kind of depends. But I will come in with my chain nose pliers and I just kind of eyeball it. I'll look at it and say, okay, that looks like about enough space, including the where my pliers are holding, right? So I'm actually counting the, the measurement from the top of the pliers to the bead. That looks like about enough room to make six or seven wire wraps, right? Yeah, sometimes I get that right. Sometimes I get that really, really wrong. But the good news is, is that you will never notice it. That's why I don't use the ruler. So I'm going to make the bend in the wire. Looks like enough space to me. I'm going to come in with, again, my stepped bell making pliers. And I'm going to do a wrapped loop. So again, we're going up and over. Rotate the pliers, take the wire over to the other side. And then we're going to do our, our wire wraps. And now you can really kind of truly see it. What looked like a really small amount of wire is actually a ton of wire. That is way more wire than I need for six or seven wraps. So... Uh, it's it's all right though. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now look, I've got room for eight, probably nine if I pushed it. It was close, but it was it was still a little bit a little bit longer than what I anticipated. All right, so close enough, right? That's good enough for me. Okay, so now we're ready to make those loops. Remember, we practiced all of the loops using our scrap piece of wire here. Now we're just going to redo those loops with the addition of this bead in the way. So you do kind of have to be a little careful. You have to navigate around your bead. But we're going to start out with about six loops and hope that's enough to go around our bead. If it's not and we need extra, we can add more. If it's too short, we can add an extra, or I'm sorry, if it's too long, we can undo one. Okay, so I'm going to show you all of those things. Um, but before we get into the herringbone part of this, make your first row of about six loops. Okay, and straightening your wire out as you go is really going to be helpful. So the straighter your wire is, the better. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with my stepped bell making pliers and I'm gonna place those as close as I can get them to my wire wraps. I can't get right up against there because the, the bead is in the way, but that's okay because I can roll this loop in. So I can guide that around for that first loop and then kind of roll, see how I'm just kind of rolling that loop into place to roll it right up next to those wire wraps. Okay, so use your tool, use your fingers, be the boss of the wire. A friend of mine, <laughs> Nicole, she's, I think Nicole is here. Nicole and I had a conversation about wire uh, yesterday. You got to be the boss of the wire, right? At first it's tricky and it wants to be the boss of you, but um, definitely in this project, you need to be the boss and make it do what you want it to do. Otherwise, you're not going to end up with the results that you want. All right, so again, placing the wire in the tool right up against the previous loop. And I'm just kind of turning the whole thing in my hand, guiding the wire out nice and straight, taking it off of the tool, coming in for loop number three. There's Nicole. I knew she was here. She's been working on some amazing jewelry pieces lately. So there's three. four, five, and six. And then we're going to check it because six might be enough. It might not be. We're just going to wait and see. Take it off of the tool. And we're going to flatten those loops out with our fingers, right? All right, now what we're gonna do is where the herringbone comes into play. So if you've ever done herringbone wire wrapping before, you know that you always go to the front of your wire wraps, right? And that is true with our loops here as well. So <clears throat> let me flatten that out just a little bit more. What we're gonna do is we're gonna guide those loops down the side of the, of the bead, 
right? Just right along the side of the bead to create like a little art shape. It's gonna frame our bead nicely. We're gonna take this wire to the front of the wire wraps that are down here on this end, right? To the front of, and then you're gonna kind of hold everything in place and take that wire and wrap it around the wire wraps that already exist and then back out the front. Okay, so you're always gonna be in front of the wire wraps. And you can see mine has kind of pulled away from the bead. You're just gonna mush it down with your fingers. Again, be the boss. You are the boss of this wire. You can use your tools, you can use your fingers to really kind of make this wire do what you want it to do. It's nice and soft, so you're really gonna be able to manipulate it easily. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to do the other side of this. So we're gonna do another six loops. Sometimes six loops is enough. Don't always think that just because six loops got you around this side, that six loops will get you back up the other side. That's not always true. Sometimes it takes one more loop, right? But you never know until you try. So we're gonna start out with six because we know at least six loops will make, us make it pretty close to up the side of the bead. All right, so. Twisting this around. Hmm, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I did. Uh, I, I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> if you all heard that, that's funny. I don't want to say her name. That's my A L E X A on my desk. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's too funny. Okay. So <clears throat> grabbing the wire again, getting as close as I can, but I'm going to be able to kind of roll that loop into place. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, so there's that loop. And then I'm just gonna kind of roll it down, you can see, so that it gets right up next to those wire wraps, okay? All right, and then we're gonna make five more. So there's two. If I say her name, she'll ask me what I want. So I have to spell that out. There's three. <laughs> Four, five, <laughs> that's very random of her, <laughs> and six. Okay. All right, and then again, gonna kind of flatten them with my fingers. I saw Bonnie say mush it, that's a technical term. Yeah, mush it. You can use your chain nose pliers, you can use your nylon jaw pliers, whatever you need to do to mush those, mush those loops into a straight line. Okay. All right. And then we're going to guide those down the side of the bead. And again, it might not be enough or it might be perfect. That looks like the right amount. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. I know that seems like it should be the same every time, but it's not. All right. And again, I'm making that wire go to the front of the wire wraps, but I actually had to go behind this first row of loops. So you can see I've kind of taken the wire. It's it's kind of in this in-between, right? And then I'm going to wrap around the wraps and then back out the front, which is going to be kind of behind the loops, or it should be. <laughs> Might not be, but it should be behind the loops, right? All right, so we've created this little frame of loops around our flower. And right now they are not a perfect circle and that's okay. Cause again, remember it's a flower. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can definitely come in with your pliers and kind of give it a zhuzh, right? We've mushed and we've zhuzhed. Those are all technical terms to kind of set those where we want. Now you're really gonna set these once you get to the end. Okay, so I wouldn't worry so much about it at the moment because remember, we're doing two more layers behind this. So what this looks like now has, it's not gonna look the same when we get the two layers behind it. But now we're gonna do another row of loops. So turn this around, however it is most comfortable for you to hold it and the tool again. And we're gonna make another, another row of loops. Now this time it's gonna take more than six loops, right? And it's really going to kind of depend on how full or wide you want your flower to be. So let me just show you with the white one that I made here, the second row is much shorter 
right? It's, it's sitting almost directly behind this first row. It's really giving extra dimension. Um, and I only used, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven loops for that one. So it's just one more loop than the original. That's going to give you a more compact kind of, um, more densely petaled flower or you can do a little bit more and let it come outwards a little bit more. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, there were seven on this one too. See, it just goes to show you never know. Um, I had another one here where I used nine. You can see the difference. This makes much wider flower. This was just where I was practicing. Um, so it's really going to be kind of up to you as to how, how full, how thick you want your flower to be, or if you want it to be wide and more um, open so you can see each individual row, okay? We're gonna start with about eight loops and see how it goes. We might need more, we might need to take one away, we'll just see, but same thing. Starting up here at the top, we're gonna turn that first loop and then you need to kind of roll that loop in, All right? All right, so there's one, we're gonna do seven more. So there's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so we have eight total. And we're going to kind of mush them with our fingers. Put your pliers if you want. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take these and we want these to go behind that previous row, right? Just like with regular herringbone, it goes behind the, the row before it. And then again, the wraps or the wire needs to go to the front of the wire wraps down here. So you're going to have to decide how tightly packed you want this to be. If eight is enough, or if you need one more loop, I'm actually gonna add one more loop to mine. I could make eight work, but I feel like nine might be the right number here. And again, we want that to go behind the previous petals And then to the front of the wire wraps. <clears throat> and you're gonna hold everything in place here. That's probably the trickiest part is holding everything. Let me take this front row, and kind of pull it forward just a little bit with my pliers so that I can get this row behind. And then around and back out the front. Right, so we've got a row sitting behind a row. And that's what really gives this that three dimensional look to it. Okay, now we're gonna do the row to go behind this row on this side. So same thing, we're gonna do about eight, maybe nine, starting with that first one. And again, you need to roll it in as close as you can get it before you start with the rest, okay? All right, so. There's two, three, four, five, six, Seven. Now let's look real quick. I know we've only done seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've only done seven so far. But like I said, you never know if it's going to be the exact number on both sides. So your best bet is to check it when you get close. Because this one looks like eight is going to be enough. It looks like nine is going to be too much. So I'm glad that I checked it. Let's do one more and see.
Let's take that behind that previous row, but to the front of the wire wraps, around and back out. All right, and it's getting a little crowded at the wire wraps and that's okay because we can always come back here to the back with our pliers and we can kind of pull those wire wraps down and away from that loop. All right, so there's gonna be, there's gonna be enough room in there for our next row. All right, turning it around, taking a look at it, you can see how it's starting to really kind of take shape here. It's not perfect. It's more kind of oval shaped at the moment, but I can squish it and manipulate it into this shape that I want it to be. Let's do our last two rows. Okay, so for the previous row, we did what, nine, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, we did eight on this one. See how many it takes. <clears throat> I'm going to say 10 or 11. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let's check it. All right. Let's see first. First thing I'm going to do is kind of flatten out the row. And then take it behind. And that looks like that's going to be plenty. So I'm going to kind of zhuzh. <laughs> Is that technical term again? Get a little zhuzh. Take it behind to the front of the wire wraps. Wrap around and back out. Okay, and then again, just kind of pushing it all into place. So you can see my rows are nice and staggered, but they're full. It's going to be nice and wide, whereas this one, the rows were really kind of pushed in and more compact. This one, you can fully see all three rows. All right, we're going to do our last set on the other side. Okay, so that first loop, each additional row, that first loop is always kind of a challenge because you really kind of have to wiggle it behind the previous, the previous row to get it as close as possible. So there's one, two, three, four, Ooh, let's stop for a second. The wire's getting a little short, kind of straighten everything back up a little bit. So one, two, three, four, we have five. I don't know why I said four. I think it's because I started counting, wait. Nope, that's our, that's our main loop. Don't count the main loop, it's only four. <laughs> that's why <laughs> you gotta be careful when you're, when you back off of this because you don't, since we made our loop on the top and the bottom the same size as our loops, don't accidentally get that caught in there But when you're counting. But then it also is nice because it looks kind of seamless, right? That loop that we made initially is, um, is really going to just kind of disappear into the design, which is, which is nice. So there's five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we're going to check it because ten might be enough. We never know. All right. 
and kind of flatten those out just a little. Okay, take those behind that previous row. And that looks to be about right. Now this last wire wrap, that's a tricky one because it's already pretty full down here. And again, if you can come in with your pliers, kind of mush those down if you can, wiggle them with your fingers. Mine don't want to move too much. It's all right. I'm just going to kind of crowd it out. You're not going to see any of that really. So it's, it's going to be just fine. So we're going to wrap around. and wrap around a second time. Now that is gonna kind of crowd out that loop a little bit, that's all right, because in the grand scheme of things, you're not really gonna notice a whole, whole lot. All right, I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and I'm gonna trim off. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna clean this up, right? I'm gonna clean this up because it's not quite a circle. I mean, it doesn't have to be but depending on if you want it to be a circle or if you want it to be kind of an oval shape, now is the opportunity to really kind of manipulate it. You can squish all of it. You can always come in with your pliers if you want to, your chain nose or your nylon jaw, whatever you want to use. I'm personally a fan of just using my fingers because I feel like I don't have to worry that I'm going to accidentally mark up the wire. But then you've got yourself a cute little flower here and you are ready to add a leaf to this because <clears throat> if you just look at it, <laughs> somebody else might not necessarily see a flower, right? But you add a leaf to it and it changes everything. So I've got these check glass leaves that I got. Um, these are, these are so cool. I think you can, uh, I think you can grab these as a, uh, as a pro pack. At least you used to be able to grab these as a pro pack on the Michaels website. Uh, if you need a bunch of them, um, but this is one of my very favorite leads that Michaels offers and they come, uh, you know, on a card with, with several, I'm going to use jump ring to connect these to my flower here and then a jump ring on the top. And that's it. Right, that's, that's literally all there is to this when it comes to just adding a little, let's take one of our loops here and kind of twist it this direction. And then we're gonna add our jump ring to the bottom. And now there's no denying that this looks like a flower. Look how pretty love that such a pretty little pendant you are working on some spring designs you can grab those cheaper by the dozen wires and do these in all different colors you could actually do these on a really long piece of wire so you could do this in two steps actually uh, instead of let's pretend like this was a green piece of wire because we do have this beautiful green that's in here that I think there was originally there were two shades of green I only have the one green left uh, I think there was a lighter green in this too, but you could do your flower on a really long piece of green and call that the stem, right? So instead of using one piece of wire to do the entire thing, do it in a section of two, right? Do your wire wrapping, add your bead and do your wire wrapping around it and do your petals and keep the long stem. And then you could actually put these in a vase and have like a whole little bouquet of these wire wrapped little flowers if you wanted to. And again, you can do this larger. So if you wanted to use the steps bell making pliers, you could make um, some really big petals, right? And you could make, um, you know, sun catchers or, you know, home decor or whatever you wanted to with, um, with the larger, petals and it would make a really big beautiful flower which you could add to just about anything I kind of like taking my wire flowers and sticking them in with other flowers you know what I mean so if I've got some beautiful silk flowers that I got from Michaels then take some of these that I've made and stick in with the rest of the other flowers which is really really pretty you can do this on a smaller version as well like I mentioned before if you wanted to make earrings out of this instead of doing it as a pendant you could also come to the back and wire wrap a pin back if you wanted to make it an actual pin and pin it to yourself instead of wearing it as as a necklace but you can always just add a jump ring to it and thread some chain on which is what we're going to do real quick here so I'm just going to use an additional six millimeter jump ring here 
thread that on the top. And then we're just going to thread it onto a piece of chain. Look how pretty. It makes just a really lovely little necklace. So there you go, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this one. I'm going to turn you around and show you what this looks like on the bust. And guys, if you would like to uh, sign up for my upcoming classes, I've got spring designs on the brain right now. Let me turn you around. I've got spring designs on the on the brain. The next Michael's class that I've got scheduled with you guys is a, um, a butterfly pendant made out of wire. If you've not figured it out yet, wire is kind of my love language. So uh, that class is already available if you wanted to go ahead and sign up for that. But you can see, look how pretty. So, so nice. I love that. And I love that you can get that that value of the, the cheaper by the dozen wire because you can get so many different colors and you can make so many different flowers. Because one of those little spools of wire will get you at least two, maybe three of the flowers. So you can get a ton of flowers out of one package of that wire and grab a couple of the, um, the cards that have the leaves hanging on them if you wanted to do that. Uh, you know, and have the little dangles or whatever it is you're going to do with them. You can also change up this middle bead here. You could, any color of the rainbow. Michael's has got a ton of beads to choose from. So it doesn't have to have, be a yellow center, but uh, there you go. I hope that you guys have enjoyed today's class. I was super thrilled to get to do this one with you guys. And I'm really looking forward to the next one. So uh, if you want to see another fun wire design with me, don't forget to check out the Michaels website and sign up for that next one. It's a wire butterfly. It's going to be a fun one. Hey, Lots Sarah. of sparkle. Yeah. Before you sign up, there are some questions um, yes. that you may have missed. So yes, there's uh, some questions asking, how could you make it into like a triangle or a square? Ooh, that is interesting. So as far as making it into a shape other than a circle, you're definitely just going to kind of manipulate um, your layers around here. So where we've kind of guided ours, um, I, and I think probably maybe the best place to start to answer that question would be maybe with a different shaped bead, right? So if you used a cube, you could definitely guide the wire around the outer edges of the cube and the same with a triangle. And that would definitely give you a good kind of baseline for making that shape. Um, you're gonna have a little bit more of a challenge using a round bead in the center to create um, a triangle shape or a square, but but it definitely can be done. You're just going to kind of manipulate the wire, which is easy to do because it's that dead soft artistic wire. So you're not going to have any, any major problems kind of manipulating that into whatever shape you need. And there was another question asking, have you ever tried to do it in a different color for each circle? Oh, now that's a really good question. So you absolutely can do this with different colors for each section, but you're going to need more obviously than one piece of wire. So what I would do in that instance is I would start out with my base color, which you might wanna start out with green, right? Where we where we very first started and add your bead to it. And then that first, that first row of circles on either side, you're gonna need a, a singular piece of wire for that row. And then you're gonna cut a slightly longer piece for the second color, you're going to wire wrap that on and then do your loops and then wire wrap a third piece. So you 100% can do that. Or if you want to get a little fancy about it um, and, and not do each individual row, uh, but you wanted something with a little bit more visual texture, uh, Beetalon has the multicolored wire available on the, um, the Michaels website. So if you wanted to, that wire has like that color gradient to it. So the wire would change color as you were, um, I mean, not, not magically, but <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> it transitions from one color to another. So your flower would naturally have those kinds of transitions, which I think would be absolutely beautiful. I've not tried it with a multicolored wire, but I think that that would be um, really pretty as well to give it more texture and dimension and lots more color for sure. I think there was yeah. another question by Debbie. She was actually, I'm not for sure if it's a statement or a question, but it was, I think if maybe you need to, if you messed up, because I remember you mentioned it in the beginning that if you mess up, you can always unwrap one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think just seeing that technique or how you would do that 
So it's, it's really kind of, uh, let's see, where's my practice piece with my wire on it. So the good thing about this project is where you're taking the wire and you're wrapping around those wire wraps to secure, it's really kind of hidden and I'll show you, see if I can get it up close. So it's, it's hidden. All of that mess, you see that on the back, but you don't necessarily see it on the front, right? So the wire wraps here where you're taking the end of that wire with the loops and you're wrapping it around. It doesn't have to be the most straight piece of wire in the universe because you're ultimately not going to see it. So like with mine, if I decided, okay, that's one wrap too many, honestly, I would just kind of pull it away and then just very gently undo the circle, undo the wrap. And you can see how, how messy that looks. But when you wrap it around those existing wire wraps and kind of tuck it behind the previous row, you don't see it at all. And if you needed, like if it was just really messy, you can always kind of come in with your nylon gel pliers and straighten it out a little bit. But you're not, you're not going to see any of those little crinkles and creases because you're just going to use that same wire to wrap around with. So you'll never even notice it. So you most definitely can undo as many of those loops as you need to, knowing that the wire that you've undone that's messy is going to be something else. So you don't, you don't have to worry about it at all. Unless you've made like a really, really sharp bend, then you might want to cut off and try again. But for the most part, I think you're pretty safe in being able to hide all of that. So these are great questions. Thank you guys. I think that is it. So I'm not for sure if I missed any. <laughs> I think some of them, I think some of the questions, they may have been um, some of the more experienced um, people have already answered those questions. So I don't think yeah. there's any, any more that I didn't catch. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you caught them because it's hard for me. It's like up here in the corner and sometimes I don't see them. They go by pretty quickly. So I appreciate you looking out for me. And guys, if I missed any of your questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You guys, a lot of you know me outside of the Michaels classes and know where to, uh, to get me, but you can always ask Michaels. They're really good about sending us emails. So if there's a question um, and you, you directly email Michaels, they will reach out to me or to Meredith or whoever um, to, to ask them those questions. So please don't, don't feel like if your question got missed, there is no answer to it. Um, yeah, very, very much appreciate all of the questions. It's, it's really nice. I, uh, I appreciate you. And I appreciate you too, Felicia. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me this afternoon. I appreciate you sign up for my next fun class. It's going to be a good one. In the meantime, be sure you are checking out all of the other amazing designers that are doing classes here on Michael's, whether it is jewelry making or sewing or painting or drawing, there is something to be learned here anywhere on the Michael's website. So definitely check that out. Don't forget you can come back and watch this as a video on demand as many times as you want to. You can fast forward through all the chat in the beginning. All right, guys, have an amazing rest of your afternoon and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye guys.